Hey, Olivia here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this mountain range painted pot. This video is a spring craft collaboration with a few other creators here on YouTube. So if you wouldn't mind when this video is over, going down to the description box and watching the rest of the playlist for some great spring crafts. So the first thing I did was go into Adobe Illustrator and make my own custom mountain stencils. Then I used some vinyl and I cut it all out with my Cricut Maker. From there, I simply separated the stencils with scissors and weeded the designs. My idea was to be able to layer these different size mountains to create a ombre mountain. So now it's time to start painting. The first thing I did was mix an orange that would match the color of my terracotta pot. And my idea is I'm gonna add white to it as I go. So this is a chalk paint, which I prefer to use with terracotta pots because it's kind of the same texture and it just goes on really well. So this is gonna be my very first stencil I'm going to use. I'm actually gonna end up cutting this little bottom bar off since I want it to go a lot farther since I'm doing it on a pretty big pot. So I'm just gonna peel that off of its backing and then apply it onto the pot, making sure to really press down around the edges to create a good seal. When working with stencils, I like to use a wet makeup sponge that I have squeezed all of the water out of to apply the paint. You can either put the paint directly onto the pot or onto the sponge and then simply bounce it or dab it onto your pot. A few little bits of debris in my paint, so I simply just scrape those off with my fingernail and then just bounce my makeup sponge over it to cover it up easily. Once you're finished filling in your mountain, you're going to go ahead and peel off that vinyl while the paint is still wet. That's gonna leave you with the cleanest, crispest edge. So one of the great things about using chalk paint as well as the makeup sponge is you end up with this nice, neat, consistent, thin layer of chalk paint. And this chalk paint dries pretty quickly, so once it's dry, you can Within like 10 minutes, you can move on to your next layer of mountain. So this next stencil I'm using is a bit smaller of a mountain that I'm going to be layering over the previous one. Um, I'm gonna lay it down to figure out my position and then I'm gonna also cut off that bottom section again. I cannot stress enough how important it is to make sure that the edge of the stencil is fully down and smooth on your pot to keep it from any sort of bleeding or feathering from the paint. So for this next mountain, I'm gonna be taking some of my original terracotta color and I'm actually going to put it into a different container and then I'm gonna add some white to create a lighter shade. So I'm simply just going to do the same thing again. I'm going to bounce my sponge all over my stenciled area until I have full coverage. And check that out, another beautiful edge. 
Now I know some people might be worried about the vinyl pulling up some of the paint underneath and I had no issue with this. Now when I made a second pot, I tried using a regular brush to apply the paint instead of the sponge and I did have issues with the paint pulling up. So I definitely would suggest using a sponge over a regular paint brush for this type of project. So I came to the realization that I probably needed to put another big mountain on the other side of the pot. I, that's one of the challenges of working in the round like this, is thinking about how the pot looks from every angle. So I ended up having to do some tri tricky little masking to be able to make this work with me having already put that lighter colored mountain in front of where this one would be. If you hold on to the backing from the vinyl, you can easily reuse these stencils. When you're finished, just stick them back onto their back and they'll be ready for next time you need to use them. So I took these little edge pieces that were left over from the other stencils and I used them to mask off where I had already painted. So now I'm just figuring out where exactly I want this next mountain to be. One of the great things about this vinyl is you can pretty easily pull it back off of the terracotta if you don't have it in the spot that you want.
One of the challenges of using these pots is they do have a curve to them, so using that straight stencil sometimes can lead to some strange happenings. So my number one suggestion would be to actually apply your vinyl from the center and work your way to the edges when using the stencil. As I work my way closer to the bottom of the pot, the paint becomes lighter and lighter and the mountains themselves become smaller and smaller. To cut down on dry time, you can use a heat gun like this one I have here to dry your paint a little faster.
And that's how I make these unique mountain painted pots. I hope you try out my easy method for unique coordinating pots for all of your plant pals. It would mean so much to me if you could like and subscribe below. And as always, thank you for watching.